Hey everybody, let's talk about communicating with type and the different ways that we use typography to get our message across. So when thinking about this, uh, there are a number of ways to look at it because there's a literal message that we convey with our typography, but there's also a subliminal message that uh, comes through and we wanna make sure that we're in control of our message. And one way to explain this is to talk about form versus function. So form versus function is a principle in design where we talk about the two requirements of, of any design, which means it needs to look good, but it also needs to be functional. Think about a piece of furniture or some other thing that's created. Um, we want it to be useful, but then at the same time, we want it to be aesthetically pleasing. Typography is another one of those things that has a usefulness. We need to literally get a message across, but at the same time, it has a lot of character and personality and we wanna make sure that the appearance looks the way we, we need it to. So one way to explain this is to look at a car. Look at this beautiful Ferrari here. Um, the beautiful lines, the color, the quality, the materials, the shapes, you can see how aerodynamic it is. It just looks fast and beautiful. It's meant for a very particular reason, uh, but it is a car. I mean, literally you could take this to drive down the street and get your groceries, but would you really wanna drive the Ferrari down to the local grocery store? Um, if I had one, I would, but the point is it can get the job done. The function of this as a car would be to take you from point A to point B, but you're gonna be doing it in style. So the form of this car is gorgeous and beautiful. And how does that compare um, to this? This 1960 something Pinto um, serves the same purpose. This is a, in function, this is a car, gets you around, has seats, doors, tires. It's got a motor, can drive you down the street. So in functionality, it works, but how about its form? It's pretty ugly. Why this ever was a popular design, I don't know. Now it's um, it's kind of a joke, right? But it's it's a, it pales in comparison to a Mustang or some other popular muscle car from the same era. But uh, in form, it says a lot of things about this car. It says inexpensive. It says cheap. It says maybe fuel efficient, um, but certainly not sexy. So <clears throat> as a graphic designer, you need to be in control of the message you're sending. Not only do you need to be in control of the, the verbal message, the, the visual message, you need to be in control of the subliminal message that um, comes across. So in typography terms, what's the equivalent of a Ferrari? How about something like this typeface? Uh, this is one I randomly found, Quantify. It's a sans serif font has nice symmetrical lines. It also has some nice diagonal shapes and interesting cuts and, and clips on the edges. I really like the gap on the Q or on the A. I like the way that the Y and the F kind of fit together. I like the symmetry of things like the curves on the F and the curve on the T. These are all things that seem um, planned. They seem uh, to be, have, have been done on purpose. So not only is it a simple typeface, but it has some thought behind it. It, um, it looks like it was, it's been machined, it's been um, engineered, I would say. How does that compare to the Pinto and type? What's the equivalent? Aerial, boring, ugly, um, just ordinary, right? Sure, it gets the job done. It's an alphabet, you can spell words, but is it gonna say anything interesting or special? It, it just is boring. Um, yes, it has some uniformity and it has uh, some positive qualities. It's very legible. It has a lot of symmetrical parts, but it just looks, I don't wanna say ugly, it just looks boring. So if you had to pick and you were trying to create an interesting style, kind of sophisticated look, for your design, would you pick Arial just because, or would you try to pick something like Quantify that had a little bit more design quality to it? Let's look at another example. How about this one? This <clears throat> Alder font, Ander font. Um, it's a script font and it looks like it's based on someone's signature. 
that makes it special, it makes it unique. It gives it kind of an interesting little bit of flair. Um, the lines look interesting. They look smooth and planned. Um, it looks handwritten. Compare that to another handwritten font, Comic Sans. Now, is there any more obvious comparison between two different typefaces? The, in the elegance of this one versus the ordinary nature of this one. So in function, they both serve their purpose. In fact, Comic Sans might serve the function a little bit better. Better, it might be a little bit easier to read um, than this one. But in the form, this one, it just pales in comparison. This is definitely um, of Pinto quality. So I wouldn't use it. But when you need to, and you want to provide some elegance for a design, you're going to look for something like this that has a little more of a, um, you know, personality to it. So let's take a look at how this might affect the logo design. Here I have some examples from Google and Google's logo has taken some subtle changes over the years. It started out like the top font, a uh, serif design, some basic, almost primary colors, bright colors, but then it also had kind of bevel and shading on it, which at the time in the internet, um, that was, you know, unique, interesting, and it was their logo forever. But it, it looks really kind of corny. So at some point, they decided to simplify it and get rid of some of that, that bevel and shading and flatten it. And so now you have the, the version below, which is still a similar uh, serif typeface, but they've removed all that shading and it has more of a graphic quality. And so uh, for me, that was an improvement, but still I'm not sure the serif typeface really captures uh, what Google is or, or feels appropriate for what it does. And so even more recently, they made another change. They went from that serif typeface to the sans serif typeface. And look at what they did. They straightened out the O's. They made everything symmetrical. It's definitely uh, in kind of a Helvetica, um, Futura style. Everything is, is equal sized. All of the lines are the same thickness. But one thing that did remain is look at the E, how it's still turned and tilted. So it does have a little bit of that, that quality. Now, honestly, um, I'm not crazy about the Google logo uh, by any means, but I do prefer the simplified version better than the original. And that's something that uh, maybe taste change, it's a, it's a subjective thing, but you can see how, um, how much of an influence the typeface actually does have over our opinion of the business in this case, the, the logo for that business. Now, <clears throat> I've mentioned this a little bit. There is a literal and a subliminal message that is conveyed through typography. The literal message is what the words actually say. The subliminal message is a little more subtle. It's what they look like they say or what the design or the composition says about the character of the business or the designer that made it. So here's a few examples to kind of get that message across. Here we've got this nice business card from Kenneth Hobson, president of One Brush Carpet Cleaning. Um, what do we got going on here? Oh, so much. Looks like this thing was designed in Microsoft Word. We've got all caps for the name Kenneth Hobson, president, One Brush Carpet Cleaning. Got a green. Uh, looks to me like they grabbed some clip art from the clip art library and threw it in the background. Why the handshake? I don't know. Business really doesn't have a logo at all. Um, is this a functional design? Yeah. It gets the name out there, gets the contact information. Um, we've got, you know, basic information you want to know, all that. So it works as a business card. It's functional, but in form, is it actually attractive or effective? No, what's, what's the uh, subliminal message we're putting off here? We're putting off the message, don't hire me. Um, this is a amateur. This, uh, if this is the type of business card they're using, 
Um, I don't trust their business. <laughs> I'm not going to hire that business. Now, that seems kind of harsh, but consumers make that kind of, uh, you know, off the cuff decision all the time. We are shallow. And when we get a business card that's poorly designed or looks like it was done by an amateur, what does that tell you about that person's business? So even though literally it works, it's functional as a business card, but the subliminal message is coming on real strong. And so I'm going to avoid these guys. I'm not going to hire them. Maybe the quality of their work is good. Maybe they come with good references, but as a snobby designer, not going to call them. Compare that to this. Here we have example of a business card with <laughs> very little information on it. Um, we've got the word hidden, creative. So that's enough to give us the impression that, oh, this is maybe a design agency or, or some sort of graphic design business. Um, but there are a lot of things working for this on literal and subliminal levels. So literally it says hidden creative, but subliminally look at what it does. You've got a portion of the word kind of obscured. You have kind of a matte background with maybe like a varnish for the letters. And so the lettering is very subtle. Uh, it's almost hidden. Then you have the word H-I. You have high emphasized in white with a little red dot. It's almost like it says, hi there. Literally, it says, hi there. And um, that's a, a friendly greeting. So subliminally, that's a message that's coming right off the page. What does this say? This says sophistication. This says plan. This says design. This says in control. And so whoever they are, they have style. And I might want to trust them with my you know, hard-earned dollars. Perhaps on the other side of the card, you've got their contact information, but it's, it's a really attractive design. All done with a little bit of type, a little bit of color, and a little bit of planning. And this, I mean, imagine if that level of design had been applied to this business card. Could make big changes in their business. Okay, I got one more to show you. Whew, look at this beauty. Uh, JR Lock and Key. Um, first, let's start with a subliminal message. What's the subliminal message of this business card? Um, this is, I am a serial killer and I'm going to come into your house and murder you. That's what I see when I look at this card. I mean, who is that guy? Why is his picture there? <laughs> um, he doesn't have a logo or anything, but wow, they got a lot going on in terms of typography. Look at how many different fonts were used and the colors, the style, crazy. Um, too much. You really don't know what to look at. Sure, it's, you know, stacked, and so you read from top to bottom, but wow, it's just got way too much going on. Think about what could have been done differently about this to make it seem uh, better, more well-composed, well-designed, um, just bad all the way around. Compare that to this. Here's another design, pretty much just using type and uh, a basic logo. But look at how you know refreshing it is. Lots of white space, lots of open area. On the front of the card, you've got the logo and it's done with type. I think it's kind of interesting how it's kind of the C and the L form the little beaker um, with the little zeros and ones popping out of it, the little binary code. Um, the Coco Labs typeface looks kind of like a binary font, like an old um, monotype font. Um, our monospace font. Then you look on the other side, it's a basic sans serif design. Um, not really in contrast with the, uh, the logo font, which is good. So it's kind of subtle. Also, the coloring is very subtle. We've repeated the orange from the front and the gray, but it, it, it's subdued and it doesn't just scream at you. And it's got a lot of nice hierarchy. Typefaces are larger, for the name, we know what to look at first, and we know there's information and we know where to find it. It's not obscured by all this busyness. It's in its place and we can find it if we need it. And what does this all say? It says sophisticated, it says high quality, high class. I know what I'm doing. I paid for this awesome card, so you know you can trust me. Again, shallow thinking, but it works. Uh, the last thing I really love is the emboss on the side. The logo is kind of embossed into the corner. So that's just kind of an expensive print treatment that makes the card really special. So what have we learned here? We've learned that um, type has a form and a function. Its function is to spell 
and say things, right? The information, literal information. But it also has a form, and that form is critical to saying something. And I kind of believe nowadays that people are skimmers. They skim things. They don't actually stop, pause, and read. And so what that means is that you, you need to say a lot with how things look. And so if your type looks sophisticated, then they know that what they're reading or the person they're dealing with is sophisticated. But if it looks clumsy and busy and bad and scary, then I'm going to get that impression. And that's the impression I'm leaving. So form and function, literal, subliminal, pay attention to those things and make sure that as a designer, you do things on purpose. And that's the whole point is that with our typography, we make decisions on purpose and things like less is more really is a good thing. All right, so those are some tips. Hopefully that can help you improve the choices you make with your typography and see you next time.